Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Glam Reaper podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Muldowney, and today's episode, we learn all about the history of cremation. You might not have known you wanted to know about it, but you definitely want to know about it. Take it away. Jason, the environment, um, obviously a huge topic in terms of both burial, as you you know were saying, almost as how cremation started with that purification and cleaning the process, cleaning the body, almost I guess was was their their thought behind it back in the day. Um, in terms of of now, and if people come to you and they say, oh no, I want green burial because cremation is too polluting what would your response to that be as a funeral director well as a funeral director i mean it would certainly be whatever you want um you know we're gonna we're gonna take care of your needs it's not going to be a you know there's not going to be a qualifying or um my opinion that's thrown in there um however (laughs) uh if they ask my personal opinion I would, I would happily give it, you know, um, that's, that's not something that I'm, that I'm, um, shy about sharing. If it's asked, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say, oh no, you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. Um, but, but I would say, you know, I would say that the, 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 the footprint in general might be a little bit, a little bit less, but, you know, there's this entire cultural side of things that can easily be lost with green burial. And, you know, if there's not a, um, if there's not a cemetery, if there's not a, uh, you know, a place that is, is set aside, if there's not something marking the grave, um, because let's face it, paper goes away. Um, the internet, you know, during the zombie apocalypse, is it going to be, be around still, you know, or after the zombie apocalypse? So, so, so think about culturally what cemeteries are in our communities. And this is something that I've, that I've preached since day one, you know, of my interest in funeral service since I was a kid started with cemeteries too. You know, it's all in that, all in that, that area, that all in that, um, that same vein. But, but here's the, here's the thing is consider what we have learned about ancient civilizations based on their, their burial practices or their cremation practices. Think about what then in a thousand years, what, who knows what the world is going to look like, but think about what, you know, what we as, um, what's, what's it going to say about us and how is that going to help future generations as well to, to learn about this important history of the things that we are, you know, we are doing in our time here, because who knows, again, who knows, look at, look at how quickly technology changes and yeah. how, you know, QR codes are still around, but barely, you know, because, you know, and, and same, same thing with, with, uh, man, I have the, in my in my living room underneath my TV. You don't see it, but I have two hundred DVDs under there. And how often do I pull them out? Not very often. <laughs> but it changes so quickly. Everything changes so quickly that yeah, there could be something else in the future that takes the place of you know our visiting of a cemetery. But what about that that consistency? that a place of rest provides and that's not even again to mention the the psychological aspect of it for 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 people you know so th- there's a lot there you know there's a lot to a lot to unpack and discuss but um i i feel as a personal response to that would be um the impact is not that much greater mm-hmm. If you're, you know, if you're doing the other things that go along with it, um, it's not that much greater to do a green burial than to do a cremation. Right. Now, again, I don't have the numbers. I'm not looking at the numbers. Yeah. Um, but. Do you, when you were talking about cemeteries there, so do you believe that when somebody is cremated, do you believe that they should, I'm going to use my American terminology here, do you believe that they should be placed in a niche aka a niche for anybody british and irish watching right. um, well that's the, that's if you're talking about art then it is a niche <laughs> um um however um yeah it's um but, 
that that's the that's yeah i think that that's a great thing i think that that's a that's a fantastic way to honor somebody's life and remember somebody's life because it can be so personalized do you not think people should take their ashes home and i don't know why i'm just doing it as if they're carrying it like this Mm -hmm. yeah like they're carrying it in urn. um i don't really know what my arm movements are but (laughs) <laughs> I don't. I don't think that people should take ashes home right. or however you want to say cremated remains. Um, I don't think I don't think they belong in people's homes with, you know, all together. Right. Now, if you want to have a keepsake, I have, you know, I have a ring that I wear every day um, that my that has a small portion of my granny's ashes in it because that means something to me. This this I have this small bird on my desk here that sits on my desk and looks up at me every day. Part of her ashes are in there. Right. So, so that's the, you know, that's the thing is we have so many unique small portion things that you can do, but then do something permanent right. with the remains. Because what if, what if aunt Joe wants to come visit, you're going to let her come into your house right. and visit your mantle, you know, or, or are you going to say, no, go somewhere else and, and visit somewhere else. Right. So you um, believe that there, no matter what um, disposition you choose, there should be sort of some permanent marker of the person, whether, you know, for their legacy, for other people, visitations. Culturally and, and psychologically, it is absolutely proven that those things are important for us as people and us as a society. Right. Okay. And a, a place of rest is, is important. Right. And can I ask you then along these lines of what we're talking about, what are your thoughts? And you can be absolutely free and frank with me. I think you probably know that already. Um, and I can tell you're <laughs> that person, but what are your thoughts on all of these new age forms of disposition? So you've got composting that's been done by a variety of different people, alkaline hydrolysis that's been done by a couple of different people, permission, I don't think ever got anywhere as far as i'm aware um and you know all of these new age ones do you think they have a leg to stand on it's probably is a funny phrase to have in this industry but do you think they have a leg to stand on do you think they're the future or what do you think is the future for cremation so so here here again i'll um i remember in 2004 how long ago was that 16 years. 17 years? 17. <gasps> I keep forgetting that we're in 2021. Where did 2020 go? Ah. Uh, we, we're done with that. It's away. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> I remember in 2004 reading an article in a trade journal. Is um, alkaline hydrolysis the next disruptor in funeral service? Here we are, 17 years later, <laughs> and where are we? <laughs> Crickets. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's out there. It's out there, and it's it's out there, and it's and it's and it's growing. Yeah. But again, when when society f- places so much emphasis on things that make them comfortable at death you i've heard how many times have you heard stories of deathbed conversions you know of people who are facing death and they are you know they are they were raised in a church somewhere and they're facing death and here they are face to face with death and it's like you know what maybe i should get this right you know maybe i should maybe i maybe i wasn't right all along you know um think about that comfort that that can be given to us as people from something like that, you know, from, from me saying to my family, you know what, just kidding. I believe in Jesus. But, but, but my point is, my point is that, you know, it, it's such a, um, when it, when it comes to death, we're slow to change things. Do I think that those have a place for people? If it makes them comfortable and it makes them happy and it's something that they would want to do, by all means, do it. As a professional and seeing what I've seen in the past, is it something that is is going to change the world overnight or even in a decade? No, I don't think so. 
um, for me personal, personally, I don't, I reject, I reject in my personal life fads. I just, I, until it is something that is tried and true with the exception of a few things, until it's something that's tried and true, I am not interested in jumping on a bandwagon. Right. Which is why I still have an Android phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Among other things. <laughs> which is why you see a bookshelf behind me full of books <laughs> instead of a tablet. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just as an example. <laughs> right. But again, there, there, there are comfort for a lot of people. There's comfort for a lot of people in in these things that that are tangible and are um, experiential on a face to face basis. Um, the The pandemic has taught us so much about what we can do without being physically in the same room as people. Yeah. But how many people do you know have said, "I cannot wait to see my friends in person." You're going back to Ireland as an example. No. You're wanting to go visit I Ireland. What's if but but that's my but that's my point yeah. is that you have that aching to do that to be yeah. in proximity with the the people that you love that are there. Death is the same way. If we if we can be in the proximity of the people that we love that are dead, their memory is still here. Mm-hmm. But it 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 does volumes for us to be able to be in that close proximity. It gives us that communion, that, that, that ability to, to, to be part of their existence in whatever spiritual realm they're in and our existence here and refresh our memories and refresh our thoughts and our ideas. Um, And you've actually segued into my next question for you, actually. Um, You keep doing that. It's weird. Um, Modern technology, the Android, what's happening? Um, (laughs) So there there has, along with all these new age forms of disposition, and you are right, I mean, the the growth in that in 17 years is is fairly minimal. Um, But I, I do wonder, will we see a faster uptake of it? post COVID, you know, I do feel like people are, were faced with death a lot more last year than, than they ever had thought about it before. Um, but there has been an evol- evolution of um, direct cremation going online. So, and there's both pros and cons to it. And experts have said that, you know, it's our denial of death the fact that we're now, you know, choosing to just sort of deal with Aunt Mary's body by not even seeing her and having somebody pick it up and doing everything online. And then there's other people who are just more comfortable and feel less sold at. Um, what's your thoughts on on those? And are we saying goodbye to the funeral home? Or do you think that is um, a cultural thing, especially here in the US, that is just never going to go away and will always be around? I think that I think that culturally it's something that's always going to be around as, as part of community. I think that how its its uh, involvement in the community is going to be very very different, and and it's already proving that that's the case. You know, um, uh, funeral homes aren't starting to look like funeral homes anymore. Uh, they're starting to look more like event centers. Um, they're starting to look like fine hotels where people are comfortable and not dark spooky. Um, parlors where people uh, are a little less comfortable, um, but 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 definitely their their place in their place in society, their place in um, in in existence uh, that that's never going to completely go away because more and more people are relying on funeral homes that may not have necessarily done that because funeral homes are adjusting the way that they do things, believe it or not, (laughs) adjusting the way that they do things so that they can exactly just a little bit at a time um, so that they can, so that they can maintain their cultural significance. You know, that's a business decision. Yes, it's a business and that's, that's what it's all about. But um, that, that discussion of putting away your grief, um, and cremation fulfilling that need to put away your grief, uh, you know that's that's been a discussion for many years. Um, that's been a discussion since um, you know since direct cremation that term wasn't coined until the 1960s. Um, that that being the case, 
it hasn't, you know, it's been around for a good significant portion of, of modern history. And it's always been a discussion that, you know, that direct cremation denies people that process of grief. And it, it does. I feel like that, that, that does in a lot of ways, but I also feel like that people are learning more and more about the importance of being able to, um, remember loved ones in personal ways and not in ways that necessarily are traditional or conventional. Um, that doesn't preclude the fact that they are doing so. I don't think that fewer people are doing services. I think they're just doing them differently. Um, what was your question? <laughs> Sorry. That's... Um, no, that was that was that was that was a good answer. It's um, we were talking about the online cremation sites, and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so um, it, it's it's definitely one to watch. And as I was speaking to um, a driver behind one of these um, sites, as I said to him, I've been around, and I'm fairly new still, but I've been around the funeral industry for the last um, ten years, and. I've seen startups come and go. And one of my biggest fears or worries, if you like, is that these these new businesses and these startups will come and go. And what will happen is that families are the victims of, for example, say, and I've been approached by so many of these over the years, but say, for example, an app that's now, you know, pitching to do obituaries and so a family mm-hmm. pays to have an obituary yada yada and then all of a sudden the app and the website have just disappeared and are no longer you know and it, yeah. kind of to what your point said about the the niches um in a in a um, crematorium or a cemetery it's it kind of robs the family of that legacy that they actually did want there are people who don't want it and i understand that too mm-hmm. and we each should be allowed to express ourselves and our grief in our own ways but yeah, I considering, and I, and I feel like that's very true considering though, that don't be selfish about it. You know, mm-hmm. think, 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 and remember that there are others yeah. Um, yeah. and there will be others, yeah. you know, think about, think about children and grandchildren and great grandchildren in in that future Which, progeny that that's important. And absolutely. And Jason, you literally hit on my three things. I always say my three pillars are, digital environment and pre-planning and that is exactly one of the main reasons why i always push people to pre-plan 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 because even if you're just jotting your notes down on paper of what you want at least Mm -hmm. you get to say what it is whereas i know for example i'm always using this my poor parents have been killed a million times over on all my different medias um Mm -hmm. but you know when my mum dies i would be the one responsible and i'm going to do her funeral from my point of view because she's my mother but she's also my brother's mother which is a different person Mm -hmm. in itself she's also a wife she's a grandmother now she's a daughter herself she's a best friend whereas it would just be from my point of view and so I would be perhaps make selfish choices or make choices that just speak to my grief. Um, so that's another reason. Yeah. Main reason why I think people should pre-plan. Um, question. Next question. Um, we've talked about, uh, we've talked about a lot obviously on this, but you know, 150 nearly years of cremating. Um, when it originally started, um, and you know, we've said that it hasn't changed a huge amount. How long did it take for? Uh, um, and I know you said that there was a service in the room. Was the body in and cremating at the time the service was taking place, or is it more? Was it more like today, where it took place sort of after? You know, maybe the family could close the door, and then it happens. And then, how long did that process take versus today? So, uh, so typically if something concluded at a crematory, it was like a committal service, like you would have at a, a burial. Um, it's very, very similar, same kind of thought. In fact, a lot of the early crematories in the country, uh, the, the, the cremation apparatus was in the basement and the chapel was on the upper floor and there was an elevator between the two. Um, and they would lower the casket to the lower level, which you know, mocked the idea of a burial. Um, so, so same, same kind of thing. In fact, there was a crematory in New Jersey that had, um, the top of the, 
the the lowering the lowering device elevator had a kind of a canopy over it and when that canopy was all the way down it was flush with the floor and it looked like a mound of dirt it was wow. made to look like a mound of dirt with flowers on it and and all kinds of things so it was a you know it was this it was this desire to to maintain tradition um and um you know create these architecturally significant buildings that would house this committal service and that was all part of the um the process of the the um the cremation movement um Typically, the casket would be lowered uh, at the, you know, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The casket would be lowered. Uh, the cremation would begin then, typically. A lot of the early crematories in the country actually um, requested, and some even required, that somebody witness the casket being placed into the cremation chamber and invited people, even a lot of them early on, invited people to look through the peepholes and see what was happening in the cremation chamber. Yeah. And, you know, that's all things that were, were um, important for the movement of cremation. But, but that being the case, you know, that, that process then took place in two hours, you know, hour and a half or two hours. Um, some, of the, some of the early crematories got up to, you know, 2,500 degrees. Of course, that took a little less time, um, but uh, yeah, but I... they also would take a lot of time to get to that temperature as well. Right. Okay. Um, but but so so that was the that was the pro. It's not again not much different than what it is today. Now. Yeah. Um. It's just mm-hmm. as you said, technology has just sort of moved moved it forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, it's really it's so fascinating, and it's you know the funeral. It's interesting and kind of mind blowing, really, as a, as a kind of point today, that it started with one guy wanting what he wanted and having the money to build it. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, other people want in as well, and it's kind of that's definitely what gave it the kickstart. That's yeah. he he wasn't the you know he he wasn't the the it wasn't like only one person wanted cremation. Right. He just... It's that it was this massive discussion, and he kickstarted it by building a crematory. He had the money. Let's just call a spade mm-hmm. yeah. a spade, Jason. It's mm-hmm. like today. Yeah. If you have the money, yeah. you get to start. It happens. You get to start the movement. Right. That's just the way it goes. Um, but, right. but isn't it kind of interesting that that's similar in the way the funeral business became commercialized? Because, I mean, mm-hmm. funeral homes, the reason why they look like homes and the reason why they're called funeral homes is because it originated in people's homes. Obviously, as an Irish person, you know, we, in, I, I'm from Dublin, so not so much in Dublin, but down the country in Ireland, especially in really rural parts of Ireland, we're still waking, you know, we still do wakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's still yeah. a huge thing. And it's just fascinating fascinating that it started in a whole it started as such a personal thing cremation and right. funerals um and came from a really pure place um to now where it is quite commercialized um and mm-hmm. is such an industry and it really is and people right. often uh i've had this conversation with a couple of people that have been on my show is um whether to call it a community or an industry or a business, et cetera, et cetera. I personally flip between all of the above because I think it is all of the above because to me, profit mm-hmm. and loss happens. It's an industry, it's right. a business sales and, you know, there's buying right. and the selling, um, there's, you know, demand and, um, but some people are hesitant of that. And I feel like that's almost doing the industry a disservice because, right. It's and and honestly, it's a part of what I try and do whenever I'm speaking to the media, and um, which is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast was to have these open and honest conversations and show the public that it's not all money grabbing, it's not cowboys, it's not sometimes the way the media pictured. Like during COVID, mm-hmm. I'll never forget. Obviously, up here in New York, we were in the trenches, and the one mm-hmm. thing the media went on, and thankfully, I did get a bit of um press and was able to sort of address certain things but one of the things they highlighted was the um the truck outside a funeral home in brooklyn that was housing millions of bodies wasn't well, millions but you know they glorified right. and it's just right. yeah it's like would you do that to a hospital would you would you do, right. you know everybody was in the trenches at that point and my heart really went mm-hmm. out to what i ca- kept calling us the last responders because we were mm-hmm. working well not me because i'm not actually a licensed funeral director but the funeral homes that I know, they were working mm-hmm. every hour God's ends, just like the nurses and the doctors. And honestly, to me, it was right. almost 
just as difficult as the first responders because we were dealing with the deaths just mounting. Um, and it's just, yeah. Just, and it, it, it was, it, it, it was, it was a, you know, in, in my experience, it was a tough time. Um, I was at that when COVID first hit and until October of last year, I was on the management team of a huge funeral home here in Austin. And we had the care center at the back of our funeral home for all of our funeral homes in the area. And um, just, I've never seen so much death. I've never seen so much of that. And it was, uh, it was tough, you know, it was tough to see and experience and, and, and um, watch happen. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that it's, yeah. And it's be, being, being in that, in that, um, depth is tough. It is. And it's, you know, as I say, and it's not that to harp on about it or it's not to seek sympathy because actually that's one of the f- last things any funeral director I know does is seek sympathy. Mm, right. It's really interesting right. actually. And um, yeah, so, selfless and, and really- you know, it, it's, it's funny for people to, to talk about, you know, death care being so money driven, mm. uh, and, and, uh, when it, when in actuality, I, very few funeral homes or funeral directors that I know would, would be so self-serving to say that that's why they why do they're it. In it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a calling right, first. Right. Do they make money out of it? Yes. It's, it's, yeah, and again, it's, I don't want to make light of it, but we regularly do on the Glam Reaper mm-hmm. podcast, but it's like Irish people. We're not drunks. We just like mm-hmm. having a good time. And if we keep drinking <laughs> and we end up drunk as a consequence, then do you know that's what what you're gonna do <laughs> just like to have a good time right <laughs> right so, that's, that's a big thing and i'm sticking to it um well listen jason mm-hmm. we won't hold you on any longer because we have held you on long enough but thank you so much um and i can definitely see that we will have you back on again and perhaps if i do take that needs. trip to austin and we maybe can mm-hmm. um visit the uh, funeral museum that would be amazing so um, that would be even, fantastic. We might even do a live podcast. Um, that would be that would be great and on on location absolutely. for sure. I would love it. And as we just discussed, yeah. meeting in people or meeting in people that would just be weird. Mm-hmm. Meeting people that too. <laughs> <laughs> meeting in person is really where I'm. I'm a firm believer. Even at the memorials that I do, you know, I cut. I did quite a few virtual ones during COVID, but it's really not. I don't believe in it. Um, I believe in gathering mm-hmm. people together whether it's the irish in me or not i don't know but and i think that you know i think it has its place yeah i think it certainly has its place but i don't i don't know that that should be the place you know Um, absolutely i do want to just really quickly before we um uh we stop recording um can you tell us a tiny little bit about um kena obviously the um the company that you're a spokesperson for, sure. um, that would be great. Well, uh, so I, I'm not necessarily a spokesperson, but I am the historian. Um, I am the, uh, the Cana is the oldest uh, cremation focused uh, industry association. It's not, not necessarily a company per se, um, but uh, we are, we are a nonprofit organization that, Basically, our our factors are um, educating cremationists, educating funeral professionals about cremation, uh, and especially providing and maintaining statistics uh, that we gather each year for the U.S. and Canada uh, for the the you know the the rates of cremation. Uh, we are the again the oldest association that focuses on all aspects of cremation, whether it's water cremation, fire cremation, any of the above. And uh, we, we have a couple of events that happen each year um, that are that are kind of the, you know, the gathering place for people who uh, want to actually learn about cremation. Um, but we're, we also have several uh, in-person trainings that take place, and hopefully those will pick up again. Uh, but we have virtual as well, virtual and in-person trainings for uh, our crematory uh, operations uh, certification program. That is something that um, a very, 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 the, the industry standard. We we created the crematory operator training. Uh, so the, that crematory operations training is the benchmark uh, that 
many have copied uh, from from other associations as well. But I'm a little partial too. But um, but 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 that being that being said, we are the we are the the go to for uh, cremation information, statistics, all of those things. And uh, um, cremationassociation.org is the the website and um, read learn it's there's a lot to it perfect well thank you jason so much for being on the podcast and if anybody has any questions about cremation jason's definitely your man so either shoot us an email at glam reaper podcast at gmail.com and we will gladly put you in touch with jason or leave uh something in the comments and tell us uh ask a question and yeah thank you so much you're also welcome to find me on facebook the cremation historian uh just look me up there and and uh, you'll see all kinds of fun uh, history tidbits that go back a few years. It's been a little quiet lately um, uh, with with me making posts, but there's a lot of information there that if you haven't seen it yet, then it'll keep you busy for a while. Excellent. And we will put all your links down below for you to find Jason in whatever manner he wants you to find him. <laughs> Please. <laughs> all right. No. didn't know any of that about cremation i personally found this conversation really fascinating and as always any comments feedback or questions send them to glamreaperpodcast at gmail.com we'll see you next week